Hi, it's Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So this week is one of my favorite topics. That's right, we are taking a look at the new books because we have been getting a ton of new books in. We are getting new books in and on the shelves every single day. And I want to take a look and highlight six of them, even though I promise you we have way more than just these six. Okay, so let's get started. Our first one is A Wish in the Dark by Christina Sontor Bach. So, in the fantasy town of Shatna, years ago in the past, the city was burned to the ground. When it was rebuilt, the only way they were then able to get light, power, and heat were through these orbs that were controlled by this man called the governor. And this person rules the city with an iron grip because he basically gets to determine who gets what, you know, who in the city gets power and who doesn't. So he has like a pretty strong rule over everyone. So while all this is going on, our main character Pong was born in a Nam prison and he is supposed to stay there until he is 13 years old. When he is 12 though, he decides he has had enough and he escapes from the prison in this epic journey and ends up living with some Buddhist monks. So after Pong escapes, we then meet Nock, whose father is the prison warden. And Pong is the first person who has ever escaped from this prison and her father is extremely embarrassed and the governor is pretty upset with him. So. Nock decides she's going to try to help the situation and she is going to go after Pong and she is going to capture him and bring him back to the prison. So as the two of them try to complete their goals, you know, Pong wants to stay hidden while Nock is trying to find him, they start to become entwined with each other and they get wrapped up in this ever-growing rebellion against the governor. Both Nock and Pong will find, learn more about themselves and their families than they ever knew before, and you will be along on this amazing and transformative journey. This is based on the country of Thailand, as well as the musical Les Mis, and I'm telling you, there's even like songs from Les Mis that are integrated into this book. So if you love musicals, if you love fantasy, if you want a good like adventure story, A Wish in the Dark. Storm God by Ellen Elliott. So Ariel feels as though she does not need to have a place in her family, nor does she have one. The only person she feels has ever really understood her is her brother. And unfortunately, he's in the army and he has been sent to go fight in Afghanistan. So he's not there to support her. And her father, ever since her brother left, has become completely distant, almost shut down. And her mother kind of forgets Ariel even exists because she's too busy with Ariel's older sister, Gloria. Now, Gloria was just selected to be a princess for the upcoming Apple Blossom Parade. That's right, the Apple Blossom Parade that happens here in Winchester. So when Ariel, you know, she's kind of is left to her own devices. And one evening, she goes for a walk in the woods and she comes across this German shepherd named Duke. And all of a sudden, this horrific storm breaks out, and he is like Duke is lost and he's scared. And you know, Ariel wants to help Duke. And as they start walking through the woods, Duke kind of leads her to this cabin of a woman named Sergeant Josie, who used to handle dogs in the army. And naturally, Ariel and Josie become friends. Ariel decides that she is going to have her own mission. She wants to help Duke to not be afraid anymore, and she even wants to figure out a way to get Duke in the Apple Blossom Parade, so she can kind of upstage her sister, Gloria. So if you love animal stories with a happy ending, or you just want to read a book that's actually set around here, the author is from Virginia, so she knows what she's talking about. Make sure you check this one out. This is Storm Dog. Katie the Cat Sitter. So it's the beginning of summer break, and Katie really wants to go to summer camp, but She's been able to do so because there's just not enough money for her to go this year. So in order for her to fill her time, you know, now all of her friends are gone, she gets a job cat sitting at night for the upstairs neighbor. Little does she know what she's getting herself into. Mrs. Lang has 217 cats and they are not your typical kitties. At night, they order pizzas, they steal furniture, they destroy the entire apartments, all while having special talents. Like some of them can hack into computers. 
or they know martial arts, or they can pick locks, or they talent scout, or there's even, there's, there's more. As Katie starts to spend more time in the apartment, and she starts to wonder about Mrs. Lane, where does she go every night, and what is she really doing? This fast-paced graphic novel is filled with cats, laughter, adventure, mystery, and there's even some superheroes, because you might find out that Mrs. Lane maybe sort of kind of is a super villain. So this is the first in a series. You will want to read this one and then you will be waiting for the second one to come out. This is Katie the Cat Sitter. Dress coded. So Molly Fisher is in eighth grade and her whole class is looking forward to the annual camping trip. But then that gets canceled due to one student, Olivia, because she is caught breaking the dress code for the school. She was wearing a tank top with spaghetti straps, but it was under her sweatshirt. But then she got some stains on her pants and she decided to take her sweatshirt off and tie it around her waist to hide them. And that left her just in her tank top. But Molly decides that the problem was not Olivia. The actual problem is the school's enforcement of the dress code policy and how they pick and choose who and what to enforce. Because there are people in the school that they do whatever they want and nothing is ever said to them. So Molly decides she's gonna do something about it and she starts a podcast about what is going on called Dress Coded. And at first things do not go very well and the girls who are on this podcast start to get bullied, but the podcast then starts to gain more followers and girls from the school as well as the other schools start to share their own stories. And what starts as this peaceful protest quickly grows into a movement which students and adults can no longer ignore. Something that many people, especially females, faced at one time or another, this is all about taking matters into your own hands and making a difference for everyone around you. This is dress coded. Serena says, so Serena St. John is a sixth grader. She is her class ambassador and she is an aspiring blogger and her best friend named JC just had a kidney transplant and she's in the hospital recovering. So, as the class ambassador, Serena is supposed to bring JC a gift from the class while she is out of school recovering. But on the day that she is supposed to do this, Serena comes down with a wicked cold and is unable to do so. So, Leonie, another classmate, steps in and offers to do it for her, and before she knows it, she is JC's new best friend, leaving Serena feeling hurt, lonely, and rejected, unsure of herself, and angry. As Serena starts to figure out who she is and the fact that relationships do change, she gains the realization that she has a lot that she can offer herself and she does not need to be in anyone's shadow. This realistic look at friendships, relationships, families, and growing up as an individual is one that everyone can relate to or will be able to at some point in the future, Serena says. And our last new book for this week is Ahmed Aziz's Epic Year. So Ahmed is 12 years old and he is forced to move from the only home he has ever known. He's living in Hawaii. Now his father has cirrhosis and he has to move closer to a hospital on the mainland to get this experimental treatment that may be the only thing that could save his life. And naturally, they end up in Minnesota, which is pretty much the opposite of Hawaii. Things do not start very well for Ahmed, especially at school where it's mostly white students and he's bullied for being Indian American and Muslim. And that's something he has never experienced before in his life and he doesn't know how to deal with it. Not having any friends, feeling homesick, and struggling to cope with his father's declining health, Ahmed turns to something which he actually hates doing. He starts to read. As he starts all of the books he has to read for his class, he learns more about himself and his family, including the uncle he has never known because he died at Ahmed's age. An amazing realistic book which looks at family, figuring out who you are, bullying and friendship. This is one that you will fall in love with and will not be able to stop reading. This is Ahmed Aziz's epic year. So again, these are just six of the new books that we have here at the library. But again, I can promise you we have way more than just these. So I encourage you to come on down, check out one of these six, or take a look at the new book displays to maybe find that perfect new book that you want
time to read. You might even pick something that no one else has read yet, so you will get to be the first person, which is always one of the best things. So I hope you have a great week. Tune back next week when we have a whole new middle grade book spotlight.